Hey guys, what is up? Super K Man Rocks here, and I am here for my LCS semifinals overview and analysis video here in the LCS championship. We know our three teams that are going to be representing the LCS at Worlds, but now we get to determine how they finish domestically, whether they will have to go through play-ins, who will end up earning their spot to face Team Liquid in the finals. A lot on the line in today's series. And I couldn't be more excited about it. I hope you guys are excited as well. If you want to know my thoughts on everything that's happened in the LCS playoffs up until this point, check out the videos up in the iCard right now up there. Obviously, the previous round that we covered uh, just a couple of days ago as this video is coming out. And of course, also up there, the playlist for the LCS for the entirety of the summer split. So if you're interested in my thoughts and opinions on how we got here, that is a great place to start. But of course, today we are just going to be talking about the semifinals and then quickly previewing what you can expect from the finals that happened tomorrow. So I'm very, very excited to go over it. But without further ado, let's jump into it. If you are new here, what we are going to do in today's video is go game by game, talking about the advantages and the disadvantages that each team was able to generate. I'll be giving a player of the game and a dead of the game for each individual game. And of course, at the end of the series, I will be giving a player of the series to tie everything into a nice, neat little bow. We will be quickly previewing the finals at the end of this video, but we've talked about these teams so much over the course of this year. I think you guys have a pretty good idea idea of where I'm landing when it comes to all three of these teams, but we'll definitely give it a touch at the end. But most of today will be spent talking about the semifinals, so let's not waste too much time. Let's get right into the analysis. As you can see up on your screen, this is of course a semifinals matchup between the number three seeded FlyQuest and the number five seeded 100 Thieves. These are not the two teams that I think people expected to see here, especially in the order that they got here. FlyQuest was really not supposed to be like a winner's finals type of team. They have clear strengths and clear weaknesses. A lot of their veteran players have been pretty inconsistent throughout this playoff run and really throughout this split, namely Bwipo, who has really been very up and down, I would say, for this team for a lot of this split, but they've been carried by a lot of familiar names. Inspired was amazing over the course of the regular season. I don't think he's been quite as dominant in their playoff run. He's been good, but he's not been great for this team. I think a lot of the benefits and the pluses from FlyQuest have actually come from the mid lane. Quad has been exceptional in the playoff run here for Fly. He's really emerged as their number one option, and I think that's really interesting. Inspired has basically exclusively played engaged tanks over the course of the playoffs, and that's not really what you would anticipate when it comes to Inspired. Now, he is a great team fighter. You think about that first when you think about Inspired. He's a great objective controller, and he does like to play for 5v5s, but typically he does it on things like Viego or other champions that can kind of take over in these 5v5s. That's where he feels the most comfortable, which is why I just assumed he would be a lot more willing to go to some of the more aggressive like AP scaling picks that we're seeing be still relatively common in the meta even if they're not nearly as popular as they were a couple of months ago but no he has very much opted into playing a lot of these more engaged style tanks to set up for quad and Masu to kind of be the primary carries for the team I think the bot lane has also been a huge positive for fly but it's not even really Masu like Masu's been playing very well I certainly don't want to take anything away from him but I've been really impressed with Busio my opinion has really gone up of him, I would say, over the course of this year. I don't want to say I was, like, low on Busio coming into the year, but I certainly was lower than consensus. It's funny, the two uh, supports here kind of have a linked history. They were both rookies during the same year. They both were coming up through the system at the support position, you know, around the similar time, and I always thought Ayla was the star between these two supports. Not so sure about that anymore. Busio has really been that good over the course of this uh, year, really the entire year, but specifically through this playoff run. But really, FlyQuest's game is going to be to just play to the their strengths. That's going to be kind of neutralizing the early game, not playing too fast, not playing too aggressive and getting to these 5v5 team fights where they are exceptional. One of the best teams in the league. But 100 Thieves, they want to speed this game up. That's actually been something that they have really succeeded at over the past couple of series. They have been able to kind of take a lot of teams like Cloud9 out of their comfort zone by just winning early. And there's really not a lot of teams that respond well to that. So if 100 Thieves can kind of execute that style, if they can get out to some sort of early lead, specifically if someone like Quid can really get this gigantic lead in the early game with his 1v1 ability, that's going to be massive. I think that there are positives and negatives to 100 Thieves being here. Again, another team I don't think anybody expected to see in top three. I certainly didn't, um, but they definitely have their weaknesses as well. I think the big concern for me when it comes to 100 Thieves is that the top side of the map is just not in form. Sniper has legitimately been one of the worst LCS players in the playoffs. In my opinion, I like Sniper. 
Silver, I think his game is generally fine. Um, I don't think he's like a superstar just yet. He was better in spring than he was in summer, but man, he has really struggled in some of these playoff series. He was really bad against Dignitas, uh, even in their lower bracket matchup, and I really wasn't all that enthused about him into Cloud9 either. Um, I just don't think Sniper has really shown off all that much in the playoffs. I think he's been exposed a bit in terms of his 1v1 ability, and if that continues here, if Whippo can have a really good series, that's been the main thing that's been holding FlyQuest back from being like super consistent, is Whippo will just randomly run it down for a game. And so if he is just better than Sniper, that could be a huge issue for 100 Thieves. And also... I really don't think River is in form, and I know that feels like a weird thing to say. Broadcast ended up giving him player of the series against Cloud9. I didn't see it, like, at all. There was no sign to me in that series that he earned that. I think he's, again, getting propped up quite a bit more because he is a very recognizable name, a very beloved player, and he's the veteran on this rookie team, but watching the tape, like even re-watching some of the tape because I thought I was going crazy, I just don't really see River being like a top three player on 100 Thieves. It's really been Quid, Tomo, and Ayla that have been huge difference makers for this team in the playoff run. Quid is obviously a superstar. I think at this point, I feel very comfortable in saying that. And I know a lot of people are going to associate, well, Quid wouldn't have it nearly as easy without River. I'm sure somebody has already typed that comment or at least thought it um, as I've gone over this, but the tape just doesn't back that up. River is not really contributing all that much to Quid getting these gigantic leads. And really, River's biggest asset is that he's a good team fighter right now, which does help Quid, but I really don't think that Quid's emergence is only because he's getting to play with a good jungle or, you know, a selfless jungle or whatever you want to say. I think Quid is just dominating individually, and it's really propping up the rest of the team. I think you could say similar things about the bot lane. Ayla has been really good over the course of this playoff run. I don't know if that's sustainable, but it has been really good at the start here. Tomo has obviously been the shot in the arm that this team needed. He is a really aggressive AD carry. He will try and fight you too to every single game. And again, that's really a style that I think has worked for this team. They want to be able to play a lot faster and a lot more aggressive. 100 Thieves want to push the tempo. FlyQuest want to slow it down. Whichever one ends up getting their way is likely going to be able to win this series. I tend to actually favor the team that wants to win early because typically that's just a more reliable way to win the game. But if FlyQuest is just more mechanically talented, which I think is certainly on the table, um, then they'll be able to win early anyways. Like that's usually what the early game comes down to nowadays is just, can you win 1v1? Can you generate the small advantages and do you know what to do with those leads once you get it and so it's really going to be about which team is more clinical, but the only way to know which team that is going to be is, of course, to go game by game, and that means starting with game number one. So let's get right into it. The winner of game number one was... FlyQuest. They are going to take game number one. They're gonna go up one to nothing in this series. And yeah, this is kind of what I anticipated a, a dominating FlyQuest win to look like. They never really felt all that pressured or all that out of it in this game and never really felt all that stressed, to be entirely honest. This is a very interesting draft, I would say, from Fly. I think if it were any other team, I would look at this and be like, this is a bad draft. Like, I really don't like the idea behind this. I think Aurelian Soul can work in the meta right now, but there are a lot of ways to punish things like Aurelian Soul. It's the same kind of conversation that I have about things like Smolder Mid, where I think, yes, like, you can get there, but it's not this unbeatable machine. Um, you can definitely shut it down in the early and mid game. There are plenty of options right now in the meta that can do that, and it just didn't really feel like 100 Thieves wanted to opt into any of those. You know, I know uh, the Azir was already taken on the other side, but it just felt very weird. Like, there are other ways to punish it besides just Azir. I mean, they took Maokai on R3, and I think that, you know, you guys know my thoughts on Maokai. Good champion, very good in the late game, the best late game jungler, but no pressure in the early game, especially if you're, you know, going into kind of a scaling comp. I think it's actually sometimes more of a negative to early prioritize Maokai, and it's a lot of teams falling into that trap globally. I talked about that in my LCK video earlier today, but... You know, the Aurelian Soul ends up getting online. You've got the Amumu, which at this point, I feel like I've talked about so much in terms of both my LCS and NACL content that there's really no reason for me to rehash it here. I think this champ is mega overrated. It's getting prioritized over Sejuani, and I think that that is absolutely disgusting. But if you're not going to punish it in the early game, if you're going to draft Maokai, if you're going to draft Azir, and you're not going to add any pressure in the middle of the map, then yeah, you can get away with picking something like Amumu. The only problem for Amumu is when you actually draft an opposing jungler that tries to threaten and take him out of the game. There is a very real possibility that a good jungler will be up four or five camps on an Amumu just in a good circumstance. And so, you know, I don't really like the pick. I still think it's way over prioritized. And if this is something that the LCS teams want to keep doing, I think that's going to absolutely burn them at Worlds and uh, might actually be like a reason they start losing at the tournament. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to Worlds coverage. I'm kind of talking a little bit too much about it, but, you know, it was fine here. I guess I just don't like FlyQuest draft. And yet they were still able to win on it, which I think is the impressive point that I was trying to make. I'm not trying to dog on FlyQuest after they just won a 
game. I think it's impressive that you can draft what I would consider to be the objectively worst comp and, and still be able to kind of dominate the game. But a lot of that is being able to control the mid game. And that's really up to Busio, who's going to get my player of the game. You know, this guy's exceptional. I look like kind of an idiot. Like this series is definitely, uh, I guess, exposing me a bit in terms of some of my takes saying that Ayla would be better than Busio. I said that coming into the year. Now, obviously, to give at least a little bit of breathing room to myself, I, n nowhere in the past six months have I said that or believed that. I think Busio has clearly proven over the course of this year that he has become the better player. But Ayla has been on fire as of late and this was just a gigantic support gap. Busio was amazing here in game number one, and the Leona is, to me, what created all of the action around this game. You can obviously look at the Aurelian Soul, and I think a lot of people are going to look at the Renekton and say that those were the biggest problems, but I definitely saw the Leona being probably the biggest influence on the game overall, and I've seen that as a very continuous trend with Busio. This guy has become truly one of the scarier supports to play against in the entirety of the LCS, and it's not just one or two champions anymore. It's a very consistent presence. Um, Whip the other player that I think a lot of people are going to point out. Yeah, you gave him Renekton. Sniper talked in the intro package about, oh, you know, this guy only plays Renekton, and then they just give it to him on B1. Like, okay, very strange <laughs> to see that happen. It's just kind of a funny little circumstance there, but yeah, Bwipo played really well on Renekton, and the concern here is that if Bwipo does play well for FlyQuest, this series is not going to be particularly close for 100 Thieves. He's the biggest weakness that FlyQuest have, at least in recent times, and so... Really not a great start to the series for Hunter T. Really good start to the series for Fly. I think there are a lot of things Hunter T need to work on. Again, I just, I don't want to see a team that is really predicated and built on their ability to win early, picking Maokai plus Azir. Like, I just don't really understand the idea behind that. Even the Ezreal down in the bot lane, like, Ezreal is a really good champion, and Bard, I think, works well with it, but I don't want to play Bard with Maokai plus Azir. I don't want to play a champion that wants to playmake and move around the map and try to create, you know, chaos and havoc in the mid game with really passive champions, like champions that don't really have a lot of agency in the early game. And I just don't really like the idea behind this draft. And I think it really came back to bite 100 Thieves. Ayla is my dud of the game. This was a miserable Bard performance. Uh, one of his worst of the year, like uh, genuinely one of his worst games. He has been pretty exceptional for 100 Thieves in the playoffs. I would argue that he has been like a top two or top three support in the LCS in the playoffs so far. That did not carry over into game one. That was definitely not the case. Maybe it's nerves. You know, they're in the YouTube studio. I, I don't really really know what it is, but uh, this was a horrible game one from Ayla, and that's got to change. I think River also just has to pivot. This is something that we are seeing so much of. We were just talking about it with D plus Kia over in the LCK. The inability to sense when Maokai is correct and incorrect, I think, is absolutely killing so many teams across the world right now, because Maokai is so strong in the right circumstances, but if you don't meet those circumstances, all of a sudden, that pick just becomes the biggest bait in the entire world, and that's what a lot of teams are falling into, where they just don't have the pressure and the prio to get to the part of the game where Maokai becomes the best jungler. And so... I don't really feel that great about 100 Thieves coming out of this game number one. They were already major underdogs, and they've kind of shown a lack of understanding of where they need to be in the meta in game number one, in my opinion. This is a pretty disappointing performance, but, you know, Fly looked really good, and if they do this again, like, a 2-0 lead is pretty uh, understandable, I think. If, if 100T go down 2-0, uh, that's going to be a pretty big problem for them. Winning three games in a row against FlyQuest is certainly not going to be easy, but it's just game one. If they can win this game number two and tie up the series, everything opens back up, and hopefully they can learn from some of the mistakes that I think they made in this game. We'll have to see. The only way to know is to go over game number two, but only one team can win it. We're either going to see a 2-0 series lead or we're going to see a tied up series going into a pseudo best of three. Which will it be? Well, the winner of game number two was... FlyQuest, they are going to take game number two. They're going to go up in this series two to nothing. And this is feeling like a bit of a stomp. This game was definitely closer than game number one, if only because Quid was strong. And I think that that generally just means that 100 Thieves is in the game. You know, there were moments where the Zeri looked like she could take over some of these fights and she definitely had quite a bit of gold, but she was never going to be able to actually match the damage output that FlyQuest had on the other side of this. They have Perma Lockdown with the Mumu plus Leona. And then you've got so much damage, especially AP damage damage coming through with the Rumble and then Artillery Kaisa, AP Kaisa. Um, there's really not a lot that you can do here if you're the Zeri. You just get taken out so quickly and there's really not a lot you could build to make it easier. And so this ends up just being a really difficult game to win because unfortunately you had the worst players on the Rift on 100 Thieves, which we will talk about when we get there. But for FlyQuest, player of the game to me is actually going to go to Masu. I think that this going to Blippo is entirely reasonable and it's really up to personal preference. I'm going to give it to Masu because I think the Kaisa was just a little bit more impactful 
impactful throughout the game, AP Kaisa just obliterates people. This champion is so easy, it's so free, and yet people continue to not prioritize it. I don't particularly understand. I understand the part that's like, oh, Kaisa in general just has such a weak early game that you don't want to like risk, you know, drafting it and, and just completely folding to like a Ziggs and having Ziggs get every tower on the map. I understand the fear of that, but like, if you can get to the part of the game where Kais is fine, or alternatively, if you have a roster or a draft, I should say, that uh, ends up like making it easier to get Kaisa there, then all of a sudden Kaisa is like free low. Now, they don't have that. This is another draft that's just like super greedy from FlyQuest, where they just don't really have options in the early game. If 100 Thieves were to come out and just try to fight constantly, like FlyQuest is never really going to be in that great of a position here, but 100 Thieves, for some reason, also opts into scaling in the first two games against a team that always wants to scale and doesn't necessarily draft anything that wants to fight in the early game. It just feels like such a wasted opportunity. I think things like the, you know, Jax and the Zeri, I think they're fine in isolation, but I'm not picking Ziggs. I mean, you can pick Ziggs, but I'm certainly not picking Zyra in these instances because it's just not enough pressure. You need something else early on. I honestly am shocked that we're not seeing more just like go get them junglers out there just rising in popularity. I understand that Lilia is banned and Vi was banned out this game as well, which I would say is the other big one. Sejuani, I think, can also do a bit of that. All of them were banned this game, which is good from FlyQuest, but prioritize that kind of stuff early in draft. There is genuinely no reason to leave that for later when your plan is clearly to get quit ahead, and that's the right plan, but you have to be able to have a game plan and a draft that can execute that, and I just don't think you did. Uh, Fly took advantage of that by getting Kaisa into strong positions and then just letting her rain fire down with APWs, and so um, really not all that shocked to see Masu do well, but yeah, Whippo deserves another shout out here. He's having a really great series up until this point. My only concern is that how much do I believe that this is Whippo, and how much do I believe that Sniper has just been beaten by everybody that has played in the LCS playoffs. I hate being so like critical about it, but his playoff run has just been so poor. Uh, all things considered, he's easily been the worst player on 100 Thieves, and you know, Whippo beating him is obviously great, and I'm happy for that, but like, I, do I expect this to happen against Team Liquid? Do I think Whippo's like struggles against actual good top laners is now gone because of this? I just don't really have a huge like change in thought of that. I'm glad that it's happening, but I want to see more against players that have put up more of a resistance. Um, Busio was once again really good on the Leona. Inspired and Quad were along for the ride. I think another encouraging thing is that Quad has been such a centralizing figure for FlyQuest throughout this playoff run, and he really hasn't been in this series. That's another thing that I think to point out in a positive direction for Fly that they can win through other avenues, but this feels very very easy and very simple for them. And unfortunately, it's 100 Thieves who is making it easy and who is making it simple. I mean, Quid was fine, Toma was fine, River was fine in this game, but Sniper and Ayla just are not playing well. Maybe Ayla is buckling under the lights. He's the player that I'm more concerned about because he was super good in their playoff run up until this point. This is a really bad time for him to have his worst series in quite a while, but he's not playing well. But I mean, it, Sniper's going to get dead of the game. Like, this guy's just not in good form. There is nothing else left to say. Um, his laning has actually dr decreased dramatically, his laning prowess, I would say. Um, the 1v1s are not going his way, and I understand this isn't always the easiest matchup in the entire world, but you opted into blind picking Jax on B3 and then banning out Urgot as like your only ban here, and you're just like, screw it, like whatever else you want, you got. And he chose the Rumble and he lost to it. I, I just don't, I don't feel comfortable about Sniper right now in terms of the success rate for 100 Thieves. I think that he has gotten more exposed as he's played more in the LCS, and that has really culminated in this playoff run where I think it's like been a huge issue for this team. Like I said, Ayla not so good as well, but you know, Quid continuing to try to carry games on his back. This feels a lot like spring playoffs, in my opinion, for 100 Thieves, where Quid is just popping off, playing really well in a lot of these games, and it doesn't really matter because he doesn't have teammates around him. I continue to think that River is overvalued. I will constantly see people talking about this is a 2v8 River and Quid versus FlyQuest. I just don't see it that way. Again, argue with me in the comments if you truly think that I'm an idiot and absurd for saying that, but I think Tomo is much more of a positive impact to this team right now than River is, and I, I don't know. I just don't think 100 Thieves have the firepower. I want them to prove me wrong, but they're now down 0-2. They are on the brink of getting swept out of this series, and it really wouldn't be ideal. It wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world with expectations, but this is a team that should be doing better, and I just don't feel like they understand why they should be doing better, and it's kind of frustrating to watch. I'm not going to lie to you, so hopefully they can pick up a game Game win here in game number three. Nobody wants to watch them get swept out of the playoffs, but FlyQuest certainly do want to watch them get swept. They want to go to the finals. They want to secure their spot as the clear number two team in North America and potentially the number one team in North America, at least fight over it. And they have a chance to do so here in game number three. Are they going to close this out in a clean sweep or is 100 Thieves going to win one game and keep us alive at the very least for one more? Well, the winner of game number three was... 
FlyQuest, they are going to take game number three. They're going to take this series three to zero and clean sweep 100 Thieves right out of the playoffs and right into the play-ins of the World Championship stage. They can't be too disappointed. They've qualified for Worlds, which I already think is such a huge accomplishment for them. But obviously, I don't expect this is how they thought this was going to go for themselves. I expect that they came into the series thinking they would at least put up a little bit more of a fight. I don't think anybody really thought they were going to win this series, but this was not close really at any point this was a destruction from FlyQuest proving that they are beyond a shadow of a doubt the second best team at the very least in the LCS right now they took Team Liquid to five they obliterate 100 Thieves in the semifinals they are looking as good as they have all year long in my opinion I mean definitely better than anything they've looked in the summer split up until this point right now and there is just a lot to like player of the game and player of the series as a whole is going to go to Bwipo in the top lane I agree with the consensus on this one. Whippo was excellent. He obliterated Sniper and really proved a lot of the, you know, negative narratives at least a little bit wrong. I do want to continue to say I am still concerned for Whippo when he goes into, like, Impact and a lot of these other top laners that he might meet at Worlds. He's still not in phenomenal form at the current moment, and, and beating up on Sniper like doesn't really make me feel all that much better. It's really nice to see that he can win when put in good circumstances, when put in good situations, but I don't really know if that completely changes my mind and my thoughts and opinions on whether or not I think he can succeed at a higher level. Sniper has really just not been up for the task so far in the playoffs, and you know I'm glad for Bwipo, I'm glad he played super well, I'm glad the Rumble popped off, I'm glad the Olaf popped off, but... You know, I need to see this against tougher competition, quite frankly. I need to see this be more consistent for him against others. But this was a really good series for him. He got a couple of R5 counter picks that ended up really working in his favor. And generally speaking, I just think he dominated this series. Easy choice for player of the series overall for me. And then the other player that was amazing in this game was, of course, Inspired in the jungle on the Ivern. He was really everywhere on the map. I think you were expecting me to say quad. Um, but, you know, both of them were really good. I think Inspired was definitely a lot more active, though. River got a exposed in this series, just never had any pressure, never really had any tempo. Once again, River's just not really doing all that much for 100 Thieves. He's not losing this team games by any means. He's never really been the weakest player on the team, and he's never really been a player that I look at and go like, you are actively running it down, you are actively stopping your team from winning the game. I just don't think he's really contributing to his team winning the game. I, I think that that's definitely an important distinction to make, and Inspired was definitely better in this series. Not that that is a surprise. I continue to bang the Inspired drum. I think he is very very, very good. Quad continues to be awesome for this team. He has honestly been one of the better mid laners in the entirety of the LCS. Not that that, again, is entirely surprising. It was honestly the anticipation for a lot of people coming into this split. I was much lower on Quad, and I think his regular season was about what I expected, but it's nice to see him ramp quite a bit coming into the playoffs here. I think he's been given more responsibility, and especially in these more long, drawn-out series, I think his experience actually plays a pretty big part in why he is so good in a lot of these situations. Quid is not a bad player, and Quad was definitely the better one on the other side. Busio was excellent in this series. He was the other player, honestly, that I considered for player of the series. I didn't quite give it to him, but the support gap between these two teams was ginormous, and Busio was the big part of that. It's not like Ayla just completely ran it here in game three. He wasn't very good in the first two games, but Busio really created a lot of problems. 400 Thieves that they just didn't really have answers to solve. This was a great series against his former org, the one that kind of brought him through the system. He really proved that they made a mistake by moving in a different direction. Masu was also really good here, but FlyQuest in general just kind of winning across the board. You don't clean sweep a team out of the semifinals of the playoffs if you're not playing incredibly well. But for 100 Thieves on the other side... A lot, a lot, and I mean a lot to work on going into the World Championships. This is the end of their domestic run. They are now eliminated from the playoffs. Obviously, no qualifiers, no regionals or anything like that. They are in the play-in stage of Worlds, and I think that actually might be a pretty good thing for them. We talked a bit about this in the previous episode, but NA actually got a really favorable draw in terms of the play-in bracket. They have the easier side by far in comparison to EU, and also there are four spots to get out of play-ins. It would be an absolute astronomical upset if 100 Thieves did not manage to get out of plans, and I think a couple of best of fives to kind of, you know, get them comfortable on the stage and, you know, get them a little bit more acclimated maybe to the meta, I think could really do them well. Ironically enough, I actually think this is my favorite of their drafts across this series, if only because, like, they're doing something. Like, it's, it's not a good draft. Like, there are a lot of holes, and it's very risky and aggressive, but, like, at least you're trying to win the game with this one. I think a lot of the other drafts have just felt way too passive for my taste, especially in a matchup against Fly, who really kind of encourages that play style, but... 
You know, I think this is at least something that you can press a go button on. Like, Zach plus Yasuo can do something. I really like Kalista for Tomo down in the bot lane. It just didn't end up working out. They got player gapped, and you just have to live with that. Sniper's gonna get my dead of the game once again. I don't really, I really don't want to go on this tangent. Like, I, I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, Sniper's really bad, because it's not fair to him. He needs to get better, and that's gonna be a big question mark about this team going to Worlds. They're not gonna be able to survive if he plays the way that he did in the playoffs here, but... If he can step it up, if he can get back to closer to what he was in spring, I think it could be fine. For 100 Thieves, it's just not really been that good of a look, and I don't really want to dwell on it for too long. I still think River is overrated. Already said that, but Quid had his worst games of the playoffs by far in this series. I love Quid. I think he's a superstar in the mid lane for this team, but uh, this was not a good performance. Quad was definitely better on the other side of this. Tomo was fine. He was definitely the strength of this team in this series, but what do you do? As an AD carry when everybody else is crumbling around you, Ayla definitely got run over as well. You know, 100 Thieves was just outclassed. They are not on the same level. They are not in the same tier as a team like FlyQuest, and that became abundantly clear. This was a bit embarrassing of a result for them, but hopefully they can figure things out in their boot camp and figure things out in the play-in stage to kind of gain that confidence and gain that momentum. But for Fly, their year is not done yet, not even domestically. Obviously, they're going to Worlds now, and they're skipping the play-in stage. They are slotted directly into the Swiss stage, the top two, because they're guaranteed a top two seed now coming out of the LCS. But even more than that, this team has a dark horse chance of, like, winning the LCS. We have seen so many teams come down from winner's bracket, go through a run, get their confidence back in lowers, and then come back and pull off an upset in the LCS finals. There's really no reason to believe that FlyQuest can't be another team to add to that resume. I'm not saying that they're going to go in as favorites. There's still a lot that I think this team needs to work on, but it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world if we were walking out of summer split with FlyQuest as the number one seed. All right, but that is going to do it for my LCS semifinals overview and analysis video. A nice short and sweet one up on the screen. The bracket, the final two teams remain here in the LCS championship. Team Liquid, of course, coming from the upper bracket and FlyQuest earning their way in with this clean 3-0 sweep in the semifinals. This is going to be a fun rematch. This will be the, what, the third time these teams have played against each other this split. This is a rematch of the spring finals as well, where Team Liquid was able to kind of pick up a shocking victory, and that's why I say that FlyQuest isn't counted out here. Team Liquid kind of did to FlyQuest what FlyQuest has the chance to do to Team Liquid in this series. Now, uh, TL, TL is much better than Fly was last split. I think this is the best any LCS team has looked in quite a while. Team Liquid looks genuinely unbeatable at the domestic level. They just seem to have a great understanding of the meta, of how they fit into the meta, and a great understanding of how to play out a lot of their laning phases. But, you know, Fly is a very talented team, and if you get good performances from players like Bwipo and Inspire, you can win any game. And so... I don't think this is like a lock by any means, especially because of how close winner's finals was. I'm not going to vote against Team Liquid. I would expect them to walk out of this series with a victory. And honestly, I would expect it to be less close than the winner's finals was. I would expect that to probably be the best series of the playoffs. But I still think this will be one to keep an eye on. FlyQuest could definitely come out and win this and shock the world. So I guess we'll see what ends up happening. Either way, both of these teams are going to be going to Worlds and slotted directly into the Swiss stage. But... That's going to do it. I do hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. It really does mean a lot to me. It lets me know you guys are enjoying the content, and it does help get this video out to a lot more people, which I'm always very appreciative of. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Of course, we will be covering the LCS finals in depth in the same way that we did here, but we cover all the other regions as well. LCK finals and semifinals are upcoming. The LCK semis are taking place as I'm recording this, and so be on the lookout for those videos. And of course, the NACL uh, finals are going to be upcoming as well. So all of those videos will be out soon. Uh, of course, World content right around the corner. If you're interested in a comprehensive overview of everything going on in Lolly Sports, this is the place for it. Hit subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified when those videos do go live. But of course, with all that being said, I hope you all are having a great day. I hope you continue to have a great day, and I will see you all.